Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Howdy, boys and girls. This is your wagon master, Ward Bond, to tell you how you can win a real live wagon train pony in your Edsel Dealer's Pony Naming Contest. That's right. Every Edsel Dealer in America has given away a pony. So just get your mother and dad to take you to your nearest Edsel Dealer so you can name the pony at the same time your mother and dad go for a demonstration drive in the new 1958 Edsel. And if yours is the winning name, you'll win a real live wagon train pony. Just imagine, you can go for rides, teaching tricks, and you'll be the envy of every other boy and girl. So get your parents to take you to your Edsel dealer so you can put your pony name on the official entry blank that gives the easy contest rules. And you may win a real live wagon train pony. Adios, amigos. <laughs> Marshal Dillon? Uh, hello. My name is Brandt, Marshal. Oh, come in, Mr. Brandt. Thank you. Me and my boy, we got a ranch up on the South Fork of the Solomon. Oh, what can I do for you? Uh, well, now, I ain't no ways responsible, you understand. It has been kind of put on me, you might say. Well, what has? And, and the Indians started it. They was raiding for horses a couple of days ago. They'd have got them. Me, too, probably. But for this kid they had along. A kid? Yeah. He tried to come in ahead of the rest of the Indians. He showed himself too soon. That's what happened. My son saw him in time to warn me. We put up a standoff fight and the Marapahos didn't get a single horse. Well, what's the trouble then? You know, we got the kid. What? Yeah, he's still there. Wilder than a deer. He got shot in the leg a little. We brought him into the house after. Now, I want to know what to do with him, Marshal. Well, how old's the boy, Mr. Brandt? Mm, it's hard to say. I bet he's 12 and under. Well, that's pretty young to be on a raiding well, party. He sure is, but he's awful wild. He tried to kill me twice already. Well, why don't you turn him over to a reservation somewhere? They'll take care no, of him. No, I can't do that, Marshal. They wouldn't have him. Well, why not? Well, he ain't no Indian. He's a white boy. A white boy? Yeah, yeah. Sure acts like an Indian, though. I think he's been living with them Arapahoes a long time. That's what I think. Well, I don't know what I can do, Mr. Bryant. Well, one thing, sure, Marshal, I can't keep him no more. It don't seem right for a white boy to go back to live among the Arapahoes. No. So you got to come up with me and do something about him. Look, Mr. Bryant, I'm a U.S. Marshal. I'm hired to keep the peace, not play nursemaid to orphans. You're the only man I ever heard of around here. Thought it might help that boy. You won't, you won't. Just have to run them off into the prairie, I guess. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Mr. Bryan. All right, all right, we'll, we'll ride back out with you in the morning. I don't see nobody around, Mr. Bryan. No, no, my, my son be out with the cattle this time of day. I told him to lock that kid in the potato cellar when he had to leave the house. That it over there? Yeah, that's it. He'll be in there. Now, we just open the door, Marshal, and maybe he'll come out. All right. Uh, you grab him if he runs, Chester. Thank you. Yeah, and you watch out for him. He'll do anything, that kid. Hey, kid. You come on out here. 
Stand back now. Well, just look at him. You wouldn't hardly know he was a white boy, Mr. Dillon. Hello, son. You've come to kill me, haven't you? You mind. Now, nobody's going to kill you, son. We're just here to help you, that's all. Hey, you look pretty weak to me. Is it that hole in your leg, or haven't they been feeding you? Well, he won't eat, Marshal. At least he wouldn't when I left. You been eating, kid? No. Hmm. See what I mean? It's easier to be tortured on an empty stomach. Now, son, nobody's going to torture you and nobody's going to kill you. I would like to have a look at that leg, though, where you got hit. I'm all right. Yeah, come on, let's go in the house and see for sure. No, huh? I, I don't... Uh... Hey, uh... Oh, he's been. <clears throat> yeah, I got him. Poor old fella. Why haven't you done anything about this bullet in his leg, Brad? Well, I tried, Marshal. He wouldn't let me near it. He tried to bite me. Well, he can't fight much now. All right, come on. Show me where to put it. My friend, you'll be sitting way up on top of the world when you bite into that live modern flavor. Live modern with the big red L&M. Light into that L&M flavor. L&M, best taste and smoke you'll ever find. Made from the Southland's finest cigarette tobaccos. And you get that full, rich flavor coming at you through the miracle tip. Pure white inside, pure white outside. The patented filter. The patent number on every pack guarantees a more effective filter on today's L&M. L&M smokes cleaner. Tastes best. Light into that L&M flavor. You're really living when you do. I carried the wounded boy into the ranch house and I laid him on a bed and went to work. He came to in the middle of the operation, but he didn't move a muscle or utter a sound. When it was over, I got some strong tea on him and then he went to sleep. A couple of hours later, I noticed he'd waked up and I walked over to the bed. You fixed my leg? Oh, of course I did. Why? Well, you might have died if I hadn't. A wound like that gets infected. The Rappahoes don't care if their prisoners die. Well, you're not a prisoner here. Yes, I am. Look, what's your name, anyway? Yorkie. Yorkie? Is that all? That's all I remember. Is that what the Arapahoes called you? Yes, they won't give me another name till I'm a brave. Well, Yorkie's a white man's name. Where are your parents? Killed in a raid, they told me. I've been in Arapaho ever since. Huh. What was your father's name? Do you know? I was too young. Then how come you remember English so well? An old man of the tribe makes me talk every day. I don't know where he learned, but he says it'll come to use later when I'm a brave. In our wars against the white man. Well, Yorkie, you are a white man. Yes, but I live with the Arapahoes. Well, you did, but you're back among your own people now. you got to learn to live a different life. No. You mean you want to go back with the Indians? First, I have to make a big coup. Make a big coup? What for? I'll be killed if I don't. What are you talking about? I allowed myself to be seen and exposed to the raiding party. So I'll be killed if I don't make a coup and return with a scalp or some horses. You? A kid like you? Unless you kill me first. Uh, Yorkie, nobody's going to kill you. Now you get that out of your head. You're not going to kill anybody either. Or steal any horses, so you forget about that. If I make a big coup, my mistake on the raid will be forgiven. 
And I'll be the youngest brave in the whole tribe. Well, we'll argue about that later, but... What were you doing on this raid in the first place? A white boy must prove himself many times. It's harder than for an Indian. That's why they let me come. I see. Hey, you got yourself quite a problem, that New Yorkie. But, uh... Right now, why don't you go back to sleep for a while, huh? And I'll have some soup for you when you wake up. Like a little more coffee, Mr. Brand? Oh, yeah, thank you. Now, what you gonna do about that kid, Marshal? Well, there's not much I can do, Brent. Well, you can't leave him here. I didn't bring him here. <laughs> Marshal, I'm serious. Even if that was an ordinary kid, I got no way to raise him. But this one's bad. I told you, you've been after me twice already. Well, you need the scalp to take back. It's a matter of life or death with it. I ain't taking mine. You really think he might kill somebody, Mr. John? Left alone, yeah. But he's so young. Well, I heard that Billy the Kid killed a man when he was 12. Age doesn't seem to matter much. Well, can't you talk him out of it? Show him it's wrong? I've tried, but Yorkie thinks like an Indian. He doesn't know anything about the white man's world. Yeah, I guess not. How's he feeling this morning, anyway? Well, I hoped his fever would be down, but it isn't. Well, he needs a doctor, that's what. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, Brant, is this one of your guns? Where'd you get it? Yorkie had it when I went in there this morning. <laughs> but he was too weak to use it. I told you, he's a bad one, Marshal. You've killed someone yet. All Yorkie understands right now is kill or be killed. Why don't you get your wagon, Brand? We'll take him into Dodge. <laughs> And no buffin', it dries to a shine. That new Shinola, the liquid kind. Ever wish there was a ladylike shoe polish? One that would keep a lady's shoes looking lovely without making her work like a stevedore? Well, now there is. New Shinola liquid wax. The shine is new. A bright, self-polishing shine that covers up any scuffs or scratches, but never, never changes the color of the shoes you chose so carefully. The way it goes on is new with a neat, flexible applicator that shapes to your shoe to spread the polish more evenly and accurately and keep it a safe distance from your manicure. And, of course, the Shinola folks wouldn't think of having a lady rub or brush shoes. New Shinola liquid wax dries to a shine. Shine, ma'am? The next few days, Yorkie lay on the couch in Doc's office, and he watched us with wild, restless eyes. In spite of his obvious courage, I think he was a little frightened. And when Doc was suddenly called on a case out in the country for several days, I had an idea. And I sent Chester to find Kitty. You want me to nurse him? Is that it, Matt? Well, partly, Kitty, but also I thought maybe you could talk to him a little. It's, uh, it is hard for him to trust a man, I guess. Yeah, I know. Chester told me about him. He'll be well enough pretty soon to get into trouble. Bad trouble. I'll do what I can. Um, can he try to get him to eat something, huh? Yeah. I haven't had much luck. Yeah, all right. But you stay here. Yeah. Hello, Yorkie. Who are you? My name's Kitty. I'm going to take care of you. Why? Because you're sick. Wouldn't you take care of somebody who's sick? Not an enemy. We're not enemies, Yorkie. But even if we were, I'd take care of them. Prisoners get well by themselves or they die. Not around me, they don't. Anyway, you're not a prisoner. You can leave any time you want to. Is that the truth? Yeah, of course it is. Unless you do something wrong, like kill them or steal them. But we don't have to talk about that. I want to know about you. All sorts of things. 
what it was like with the Arapahoes or what you remember about when you were younger? I won't tell any secrets. Well, I don't want to know any secrets, Yorkie. But, well, maybe you can tell me... Well, did you have a mother in the tribe? Tell me about that. I'm a white boy. They've never let me have a mother. Anyway, I was big enough I didn't need one. Do you ever want one, Yorkie? I don't know. I... I guess so, sometimes. Yeah. Better have a mother. Mine was killed in a raid when they found me. I know. Do you remember her at all? No. Sometimes I think I do. Sometimes when I'm asleep. What do you remember about her then? I don't know. It's just a feeling, I guess. Sort of like being warm. Is that what it's like? Yeah. I think that's what it's like, Yorkie. Very much like that. I'm hungry, Kitty. Would, would you let me have something to eat? Of course I will, Yorkie. Of course I will. Kitty spent as much time with Yorkie as she could manage, and whenever she'd been with him, he always seemed calmer and less frightened. We began to have hopes that maybe the boy would take to his new life after all. Chester and I were busy, and except for taking some food up now and then, we turned Yorkie's care over to Kitty completely. When will Doc be back, Mr. Young? Well, he sent word he'd have to be out there another day. I guess Miss Taylor's been real sick. You reckon maybe Yorkie could just live with Doc? Oh, I don't know what to do with him, Chester. Maybe he ought to be out on a ranch somewhere. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's where we got to do something with him. Where's Yorkie? What? Uh, He's upstairs, Kitty. Have you been up there today? Have you seen him? Well, no. Well, Yorkie's gone, Matt. What? I'll go take a look. I've already searched the place. He isn't there. Well, let's go look in the street, Chester. Maybe somebody's seen him. You better find him. That's all I can say. We'll find him, Kitty. Don't worry. Maybe he's got a hold of a gun somewhere. Yeah, I hope not. Anyway, if he's as smart as I think he is, he'll locate a horse to get away on first. Maybe a couple of them. Mm, just when I was beginning to think he was going to settle down a little. You never know. I still got faith in that kid somehow. Well, let's cross over to Moss Grimmick's stable there, huh? All right. There's Moss, you on there? Yeah. Hey, Moss. Hello, Marshal. Chester. Oh, Moss. I was going to come see you, Marshal. Oh? Uh -huh. That kid you brought in to Dodge the other day. Oh, uh, what about him? I caught him trying to steal one of my horses. You got your key? Where is he, Moss? Back here. He put up quite a fight for a sick boy, Marshal, a little wildcat. And it's time up, finally. Throwed him in the saddle room there. Sure a mean one. There he is. Little devil, he'll hang yet. Here, give me your knife, Chester. Don't untie him, Marshal. I'll handle him all right, Moss. Here you are, Mr. Jones. Oh, Yorkie, I... I'm sorry this happened. I'd have given you a horse if you'd asked me. There. I wasn't going to steal him. Then what was you doing riding him out of that stall, young fellow? Wait a minute, Moss. You say you weren't going to steal him, Yorkie? No. Well, what were you doing, then? Kitty didn't come, and I got lonely. And... I... I don't know. Oh, I think I do. You just wanted to be around something familiar, something you know. Isn't that right? I guess so. And you lived with horses all your life. You know them pretty well, so you came over here, huh? I wasn't going to steal him. I just wanted to get on him. You know, I half believe the boy, Marshal. He's telling the truth, Marshal. Yorkie, I'm sorry I treated you rough. Now, why didn't you tell me? What are you going to do with me now? Well, Doc will be back tomorrow, Yorkie. If he says it's okay for you to stay up, you can. And in the meantime, Kitty will be there. All right. I tell you what, Yorkie, you get well, you come over here, I'll give you a horse to ride. You will? Sure, I got lots of horses. You can take your pick. I don't understand you. Well, he trusts you, Yorkie. We all do. You shouldn't trust anybody. Well, maybe not, but we do anyway. Hey, Moss, I got an idea. Yeah, Marshal? I don't suppose you could use a stable boy around here, huh? Some kid who really knows horses and who's used to hard work. Well, 
I don't have much money, Marshal, but I could feed him a little. Maybe fix him a bed in the saddle room here. Of course, a good boy is like a good horse, you know. There's bound to be some hot blood in him. Try to lift my hair, I'll whop him good. That clear, young fella? You're talking about me? Well, of course they're talking about you, Yorkie. One thing, I can't hire nobody unless he has a whole name. Well, most Yorkie don't know his last name. Well, I'll call him anything. Uh, Kelly, uh, that's a good name. Yorkie Kelly? Mm. Grimmick and Kelly. Sounds all right to me. But you people get out of here now. I got work to do. And Yorkie... When Doc says you're fitting, you come back. I'll be back, Marshal. 